Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Kiva Allgood, President and CEO of NASDAQ listed Sarcos Technology and Robotics. Kiva, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks, Jill. Thank you for having me. You got it. An interest in robotics across industries is really booming. What do you attribute that to? Well, I, I think in today's market, it really has to do with the fact that labor resources are hard to find. Um, every single partner we've talked to, their biggest constraint right now is um, finding people, finding people who can consistently show up and, and do the work that's needed. What challenges do you face in terms of mass adoption of robotic systems in the industrial workplace? You know, I'd say in the past, before COVID, it was definitely changing standing, standard operating procedure. In the industrial space, people have been doing similar tasks for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, they know how to get a product out of a manufacturing floor. They know how to paint a wall or do construction. Now, though, with limited resources um, and, and people having to adopt to, to COVID, new technology, new ways of working, we're definitely seeing more adoption of really thinking, wait, I can do this differently. And that's been nice. There's a lot of consolidation and funding continues to be strong for the robotics industry. And I saw Sarcos recently acquired Pittsburgh-based RE2 Inc. Why did you choose RE2 and how is Sarcos benefiting from the acquisition? Great question. I think, um, you know, Pittsburgh is the hub for robotics in the United States. It really has put itself on the, the map there. Recent funding from the Biden administration really actually supports that as well. So for us, it was the opportunity to get into that ecosystem. Um, culturally, very, very similar, and it really diversified our portfolio. So it allowed us to go sub C. So we now have a C class product. Um, it also allowed us to really focus in, in areas and spaces that we currently weren't operating. And there's not a one size fits all approach to robotics. Can you explain the different types of robotic systems you're developing and what types of jobs they're suited to complete and, and what challenges is the company really trying to solve? Yeah, great question, Jill. I think when people think of robotics, they think of automation on a factory floor, right? Or in a distribution warehouse where we're really focused is in, in spaces and places where the workplace changes every single day. So think about a construction site or building anything. So that's a port, that's an airport or a tarmac. Our robots are really focused on succeeding and performing human -like, with human-like dexterity in places like a tarmac. So what does that mean? That means now you've got a plane that can't take off because there's been a lightning strike. So now our product, you know, the robot can go on the tarmac. It can help the plane do all the three steps it needs to do to be able to take off. And, you know, for us, we're also very focused on removing people out of jobs and tasks that are at height. That's one of the biggest risks. You put someone in a boom and that increases the risk of harm, that increases the risk of uh, danger and injury. So we're very focused on removing and placing a robot at height versus a human at height. Yeah, some of the products are really super cool, for lack of a better term, the Guardian yep. Exo Industrial Exoskeleton, the, the Dexterous tel Teleoperated Robot, the Sapien lineup. Uh, they really are fascinating to, to take a look at. What do some of these products do? Yeah, so as you mentioned, our flagship products are Guardian XO. It is an exoskeleton. It allows a human to get into it and actually perform tasks that it couldn't perform before. So for me, I'm short statured. I can't lift a lot. I can't reach a lot. Now in the exoskeleton, I can do both of those things. It basically provides you that lift capability. And then our um, Guardian XT is, as you said, it's teleoperated. So the use cases I just gave you in the tarmac, um, in, in a boom, a, a lift, now you have a robot at height and the human is in the, on the ground and you're performing those tasks. Those can, can be construction tasks and you can do that virtually. We have a two-armed and a one-armed and the Sapien is the one arm with a different lift capability. So, and we can do that autonomously. So if you think about um, the ability to paint a wall, you can now tell, tell the robot, say, paint from here to here. You teach it with one stroke and then you hit repeat. And finally, Kiva, what does the future of work look like as you aim to pair the human industrial workforce with your robotic solutions and technologies? And what is the timeline for, for getting these types of solutions into market? Yeah, and you know, we had a customer here um, this week and right behind me is our factory. And he, he had this aha moment where he said, wow, this is the here and now. And when you look out in the factory, that is tomorrow. Um, we're in the process of, you know, targeting the commercialize our, our guardian 
XT product and our Sapien product by the end of the year, and really, really focused on making sure that we field test those. We just had a great field test um, in California this last week with the, all four of our products. So we're looking to commercialize those products between now and the end of the year. All right, Kiva, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.